Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful, completely vanilla design from the Steam Workshop. Now, this is a replica of a World War II aircraft that didn't see too much action, but this is a Meshus Mitt, and it's been designed by Ferdy Heald and Stuka, so it's a joint little project by them, and, well, it's nothing little, I'll tell you that. We'll have a look around the exterior and then we'll pop inside and I'll show you all the features that just made this design amazing. So first off, we enter into the craft through the front. So on either side, we've got these doors that pop open and we also have a ramp that folds up on the inside as well. I'll show you the controls for that a little bit later on after we've continued looking. Above that, we actually have the cockpit itself. That is just um, standard blocks that have been cut down and they act as a basic sort of screen with a minimal sort of protection. And as we work our way across these absolutely massive wings, we come across these three engine pods. And I have to say, these engine pods are just simple, but very beautiful. And we've obviously got the holographic rotors on there as well. So then fan blades just will be turning. And it's also got engine sounds that I'll show you. That It's just so many levels of detail. That little bit of mesh there is a window because you can actually walk through part of the wing itself. Yes, the wings are completely hot. That's crazy. And then as we come up to the end area, we've actually got a joint that's been put into here. Because on the design itself, for this aircraft to get a little bit of extra lift, the tips of the wings themselves have been tilted. But more importantly, just look how they've curved that wing down. Just so elegant, so smooth in design. Obviously, the large scale of the ship really helps in covering up a few of the more blocky nature just look how smooth that looks and then as it comes into the rear section just below the wing you've got the support struts as well as all the thrusters that are hidden away in here look at that little support strut and it's on a little rotor there as well so it looks like it could actually flex if the wing flexed itself as we work along the tail section you see how it ties itself in just slowly block by block fitting smaller and smaller until we get to the tail section here so the tail section of course doesn't actually flex up and down with the stabilizers but you can see there's actually been uh, an area sort of cut out with the blocks so it looks like there is a distinction between the two areas of the tail section so you can actually use your flaps up and down but really nice and i just love the markings it just looks it just looks right the two shades of color that they've used in various different areas create that sort of blue waffer camo really well indeed anyway let's get to what you want to see the doors and the interior of the ship itself so first off as we come up into the upper area we have got the massive seating area for more players that you'd ever ever have in natural space engineers itself and below we also have the cargo bay area very nice indeed so this button of course opens up the door and closes it and i'll just give you a bit of scale reference so if i um, just spawn my character in here that is the scale of my character prepared to the actual ship itself. Before we load anything on, let's continue the inner tour. So as we come into this section, we've got these little staircases that go up. I'll spawn my character up here so we can just have a bit of a walk around. You can actually see, so you can actually climb the stairs without any real need for any problems. You've got the catwalk up here so you can see the vehicles as you load them in. And the staircase just continues up here into the upper deck and then up into the actual cockpit control. And it's very easy to navigate. Some of these small ship designs have some issues. So in the center, you've got this holographic table that's very cool, that I think is a little bit of creative licensing because I don't think the Germans had that. They might have had some sort of planning map there or something. And then you've got access to the wings and various different icons in here. This is the one of the rotary engines that you've got access to there. You've got access to the other rotary engine and the third one there, so you could do some um, sort of role play type repairs if you wish to but the lighting of this area is really nice you've got the reactor down in this segment so if we actually come back down the stairs and go to the cargo area at the back so this cargo area is enough equipment for whatever situation you get yourself into and then they built some sort of reactor type room in the back here so engine room lights just a basic light switch quite nice indeed just in case you want to get a little bit more frame rate out of the game itself and you've got the parachutist doors here on either side so you can see as that folds across there clicks into place very nice indeed so let's head back up to the bridge i'll just pop through the floor and go into the bridge area up here so we give, we've got quite a limited field of view but let's actually show that door opening and closing because for me that is what really makes this ship you can load something aboard it clamp it down and off you go so remote control let's grab ourselves the remote control block and hit the control option so the first thing we want to do is select the right tab 
So the first tab is basic sort of controls, and if I hit number six, it should begin the process for the doors. So the lights go off, the ramp goes up. Look at that. Just the level of detail and thought this has to go into you fold everything up so you can see that as the doors fold up, they close up and slot in, creating the cone of the nose. So you can see there's a little bit of issue here, but that's just space engineers being space engineers. It all works and seals together very nicely indeed. So let's actually hit six again and attempt to load uh, a smaller rover aboard. So there we go, here's the opening up procedure. So there we go, there's a little bit of shift sort of click here at the beginning. And then as the door gets pushed open by the actual ramp itself, it pushes open and the ramp itself is getting a little bit stuck. But that's space engineers being space engineers. Sometimes things don't always go as planned. But yeah, we go. Still worked without any damage at all. So let's spawn ourselves in. Let's pop out of that chair. A little rover if we can. So pop out of that chair and there we go. We've got ourselves a little rover from the workshop. I'll pop another link for the creator of this one in here. And if we grab that, we turn ourselves our landing gear off and we attempt to load this guy in that I'm hoping will fit up the ramp. So the new rover wheels will really help us with the loading procedure here. Rover goes in, like so. We're into the cargo bay, really nice. So we can load two in here. And what you're looking for is one of these little clamps that's above it. So once it's in position, we turn the wheels on. We go back up to the actual bridge of the ship itself. Boom. And then we get back control of the remote control block. So once that remote control block is under our command again, we can now hook up the actual ship. So I'll go back to spectator cam, go through the bottom. And if we go onto the next tab menu, you'll notice that there's a number of pistons. Now these pistons work quite simply by just giving them a little bit. So if I hold seven, sorry, no, num is it number eight? Seven and nine. So that'll give it a little bit more power. And then when it's in a locking position, I just double tap this, hold on, get that into position, I need to lock this in, so we've not actually got a lock because the actual pistons are above the cockpit area, so ideally I could do with scooting this vehicle a little bit further up, so let's um, bring number 9 up a little bit, so that'll just suck it off, there we go, and then go back down into the cockpit area, leave the cockpit, and teleport ourselves down here where we need to get better control of the vehicle. So let's just bring this a little bit further under and we hit the parking brake there. And that should be fine indeed. Pop ourselves out of that vehicle and go back up to the bridge. So that's what it is. This is why you need a ground crew, really, to do this sort of thing. Grab control, remote control. But it's easy. It's for a lot of designs, there's a lot more button pressing and weird controls going on. So back through the floor. And all we need to do is lower that down. So seven and nine. There we go. We've got it clamped. It's locked in place. Perfect. All we have to do now is seal up the door behind us. And we can take this thing for a little bit of a test flight. So go back to the first menu. Hit number six. All right. And as that's going on, we will power up the engine. So powering up the engines. Here we go. You'll see them kick into action. You'll also hear the sound of them kicking in as well. See that? Adding a little bit of a sound like that just creates so much more to the ship and they also the engines kind of spin up in order. So there we go. We can take this for our first test flight. So it is, you can take it off like in a vertical takeoff mode if you really want to. Because we've got the power like this. But if we want to do a more traditional flight, what we'll do is we'll give it a little bit of power going forward. And it is a very slow craft, but this is what you would expect from a plane like this. So if we want to give it a bit more power, we can hit our um, secondary thrust that uses the hydrogen ones. You can see our power usage is building up. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Obviously, our gyroscopes are quite good, but we can just use that to make a very gentle sort of turn in the direction we want. Lovely. Absolutely beautiful aircraft. Let's um, just hold that down and have a look at some spectator camera angles of this guy. So you've got the engines making the sound. You've got the loading ability. Now, I can see just so many designs using that front entrance nose in the top of my head. And I'm sure creators, once they've understood how this little entrance nose piece worked like this, that they could replicate it and build it into whatever ship design. So these guys have really pioneered 
a whole variety of different drop ships and transport ships by replicating this Messerschmitt. But anyway, I'm going to take it for one big turn and I think we also really need to check on the cargo inside to make sure it's fine. Let's have a look. So there we go, it's locked away, it's fine. Let's let's take it for a little bit more of an evasive course. So if we actually bring it over, yeah, see we can't really do anything too crazy with it. Maybe we could, we could do a barrel roll possibly if we're lucky. I think we're going to crash into the ground though. Right, we're doing a barrel roll, going for it. A very low altitude one. Come on, full power. All our thrusters are now upside down, so we'll start to plummet towards the ground quite rapidly if we're not careful. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a crash. Oh, the wing tip's gone. Oh god, we're going down. We couldn't manage to do the barrel roll. But anyway, an absolutely beautiful design. There'll be a link down in the description below. Try not to crash it for yourself this time. Maybe you can use it to transport a few of your ships planet side. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.